Good evening, everybody. One more time. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you. Uh, thank you all for joining us tonight. I'm uh, Council Member Ben Kalos. I represent uh, Stanley Isaacs, Holmes, Lexington, and Robbins Plaza. Uh, those are the NYCHA in my district. And uh, I just want to thank all of you for coming out here tonight. We are filming this event so that we can put it up online. So anyone who misses it can just download it, watch online, and uh, we want to make sure that we get this out to as many people as possible. If you yourself aren't interested, we're hoping you can share this with somebody who might be. And if you are interested, we hope you, we can set you up with a job. So many people call my office every day asking for jobs, and it turns out you're going to have jobs right in your backyard, right here at Isaac's. So before anything, I have to thank a lot of people who helped make today happen. So this event was co-sponsored by our Congresswoman, Carolyn Maloney, our Borough President, Gail Brewer, who's been doing a lot of NYCHA events, uh, State Senator Kruger, who represents Holmes Towers, and State Senator Serrano, who represents Isaacs, uh, Assembly Member uh, Robert Rodriguez, who represents uh, the entire development, and then our Manhattan South President, as well as our Isaacs TA President, uh, Mrs. Bergen, as well as our Homes Tenants Association president, Sandra Perez. Uh, so all those folks are sponsoring this and trying to make this happen. Uh, at Isaac Center, we also want to thank the great people there, Greg Morris, Gigi Verkake, uh, Helen Marquez, Christelle Simmons, Rhonda Braxton, Frank Giratano. At uh, NYCHA, we have some great folks working there, Brian Honan, Jennifer Montalvo, Marcella Medina, uh, Yuka Buzgi, and then uh, we'll be getting presentations from them, but we want to thank them for helping secure some of the funding uh, we have from Disaster Recovery, Dawn Sanders and her team, as well as from Reese, we have Shauna Castillo and her team, and just to give a little bit of background, uh, the City Council does hearings. That's why people listen to council members. It's not because we're tall, it's not because of our title, it's because we get to have hearings and then we get, to people ask, we get to ask people questions on the record. So after uh, Sandy, it's been a lot of years since Sandy, and somehow people are still living in conditions that aren't up to par, and the federal government finally made an agreement with the city, and the city came up and said, okay, we have billions of dollars, and I was able to work with Mrs. Bergen and Mr. Diaz, who said, you know what, this is how much we think we're entitled to. We're entitled to about $33 million. I was able to ask NYCHA, on the record, are we going to get $33 million at Isaacs and how soon will it start? And they said, yes, it's starting in September. And then Mrs. Bergen said, you know, we're supposed to get jobs. And I said, I didn't. Thanks for letting me know. And so there's a program called Section 3. Anyone know Section 3? So Section 3 says that anytime there's federal dollars or dollars coming to NYCHA, 15% of the labor costs are supposed to go towards jobs for people living in that complex, as well as people who are very low income in the surrounding neighborhood. Now, because this is Sandy money, it's not quite the same. So Section 3 doesn't really apply, but NYCHA is still giving a preference. And so one of the key things is these are not your, your regular jobs. These aren't jobs at Walmart or Starbucks or minimum wage jobs that nobody really wants. These are good jobs in construction. You start off as an apprentice you get trained, and this is a career. This is a way to make a living wage, to have benefits, to have a retirement, and it's great, and it's something that we're uh, pleased to be sponsoring. So I'm hoping that we can get as many of you jobs, and that you're able to come back, and as more work happens at NYCHA's throughout the city, that we get the word out. So that being said, I'd like to uh, turn it over to uh, Dawn Sanders. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, 
So I'm just going to go first, and then my colleague Dawn um, will present, um, and she'll speak more about upcoming recovery work related to Sandy, as the council member mentioned. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give a brief overview of um, the department Reese at NYCHA, um, speak with you about some initiatives that you can participate in, both that relate to uh, construction-related training and employment, and also in areas that are not construction related okay? So RIS uh, stands for Residence Economic Empowerment and Sustainability. You can see it's a very, very long name. That's why we just call ourselves RIS. And our mission is really to support NYCHA residents to increase their income and assets. And we focus on four areas. What four areas will really help an individual increase their income and assets? We believe that it's employment assistance programs, job training and adult education programs, financial literacy services, and resident business development services. So our office is focused on uh, four goals. Connect, support, attract, and generate. For the purpose of this conversation, we're really talking about connect, how we connect residents to opportunities that are for free, in New York City that really can help them increase their income and assets. And then we'll also talk about generate. And this is the way that NYCHA can generate economic opportunities for public housing residents through work that is being done on NYCHA property. So these are just some examples of what Reese does. So basically we work to connect you with premier partners. These are external organizations that are already doing work in the areas that I mentioned. So for example, we may connect you to a uh, pre-high school equivalency program or a high school equivalency program if that's what you need. You all know that in today's economy, um, it is very competitive and more than ever, um, having at least a high school diploma or equivalency is essential for most employment. So we can connect you to these services and you can get them for free. Uh, we would also work with residents and connecting them to business development services. Uh, we have a lot of residents that are already running their own businesses but may not really be aware that they're doing so. They may do hair on the side for free, they may, they may sell pies around Thanksgiving time and we really work with them through our partners to really educate them on how they can acknowledge that and they are already operating a business, learn how to properly operate that business and incorporate it as a legal entity. So on the screen here you can just see other ways we connect and then that's okay. And in these next slides, um, I'll just talk about some examples, right? So I already mentioned adult education. What we have today is I have two colleagues in the back of the room, Jose and Sheila. And at the end of this presentation, if you're interested in getting connected to any of these services, you can just see them directly and they'll walk you through a quick referral form. You fill out that referral form for the service area that you're interested in. We'll do the data entry on our end tomorrow, and then within 48 hours, you'll receive a call from one of our partners. So um, for this borough of Manhattan, um, the partner that we go to a lot for adult education and also for vocational training services is the Manhattan <coughs> Educational Opportunity Center. Not only do they provide the pre um, and HSC classes that I mentioned, but they also have a variety of training programs We've had several residents um, this year alone um, get into their um, certified nurse's assistant training program, for example. Okay, so under employment, we do have uh, partners that provide employment assistance to uh, public housing residents. And what this means is sometimes you may need to start uh, from the beginning. You may need help to get your resume created. Maybe this is the first job or you've been at home for some time, you haven't worked in several years, you may want to brush up on your interviewing skills. So we do have partners that do that. Um, but in addition to that, going back to what I mentioned of, of one of our goals to generate um, economic opportunities is what the council member mentioned, the Section 3 
mandate. And so Section 3 is a mandate from the federal government. And when the federal government is funding uh, work to be done on public housing facilities, there's often an opportunity for residents to be hired for that work. Typically, it's 30% of new hires that a project requires would go to Section 3 residents. Now, Section 3 residents aren't only public housing residents, but authorized, meaning that you're on the lease or you're on the family composition. Authorized residents are um, what I call here uh, Category 1. So you have the first level of preference. The last level of preference, which would be Category 4, would be a low-income uh, New York City resident that may be living in public housing but not authorized, so for whatever reason they're not on the lease, or they may live uh, you know, in a low-income area um, next to public housing. So could you just come back, Jenna? So um, another, some of the other things that I want to say about uh, Section 3 employment, um, you do have to be qualified for the work, which is why we only we don't only focus on Section 3 employment. We want to give you access to it absolutely, and it is um, really an, a, a benefit, an opportunity that residents can take advantage of. But um, a lot of these positions will relate to construction work. There'll be a baseline requirement. Um, and so my colleague Gemma in a moment will speak about one of the training programs, the training program that we actually help to operate that um, will provide you with credentials so that you're a more uh, competitive candidate for construction related positions. Section 3 employments could also be non-construction as well. There are certain, uh, certainly administrative positions that come up. And really the last thing I'll say about this is that um, Section 3 employee should be considered as any employee that's working with that contractor. So that means that there'll be a variety of, um, of hours that you work. Um, some may be part-time employment, some may be full-time, but it should be on par with what other employees of that contractor on the same project are working as well. All right, so um, I am going to turn it over to my colleague Gemma, who will just speak uh, briefly about the NYCHA Resident Training Academy. This is not a requirement to register your interest in Section 3 employment. If you are interested in getting into our database um, to register your interest for Section 3 employment, that is something that we can do for you today. Again, you would see my colleagues in the back. Um, but this training academy is just an opportunity for someone uh, to be trained and to be um, a, a more competitive candidate for Section 3 construction related opportunities or any construction related opportunity. Hi everyone. Um, as Shauna mentioned, my name is Gemma Thomas and um, I'm a part of Reese also. I work on the NYCHA Resident Training Academy program and um, the program is a partnership among NYCHA, the Robin Hood Foundation, and a few of New York City's uh, best in class training providers. So what that means is NYCHA works with different either nonprofits or um, community-based organizations to provide training. So you as NYCHA residents get access to uh, these training programs that we do. Uh, one of the programs that we're running right now is a construction um, training program. And we have flyers in the back. Um, our colleagues are there. This is what the flyer looks like. Um, currently, to be a part of this program, you must be a NYCHA resident on the lease, as Shauna mentioned before. Um, you must have valid working documentation. Um, you should be able to work for eight hours on your feet, and you should be able to qualify at a 7.0 reading or math level at the test of adult basic education. That is a test that we put on at Reese. You can register for it uh, by calling our hotline number, which is again on this flyer. You can take it on your way out. I'll also read it out. It's 718 289 8100 and we also operate a website called Opportunity NYCHA where you can go onto our website, look at the upcoming TAVE test, 
which will be on July 27th and July 31st at our office in downtown Brooklyn. And you can register yourself for that. You don't have to call us up. If you have internet access, you can register yourself and show up to the TAVE exam. Once you go through um, the TAVE process, some of the other things that you need to be uh, qualified for the training are be able to pass a drug test because obviously this is construction work and um, our partners are looking for people that are 100% when they're at the job site. Um, be 18 years of age or older or have a high school diploma or GED, which kind of ties in with what Shauna mentioned before, where if you don't have the high school diploma or GED, Reese can also help you as a first step in this process to get those credentials. Um, we also have another training program, uh, it's a janitorial training program, and that uh, training program, the requirements for it are, obviously that you be an authorized member of a NYCHA household, that you're 18 years of age or older, you should be able to score a 6.0 in math and reading on the test of adult basic education, which is the TAVE, as I mentioned before. You should be able to pass a drug test and a criminal background check. Um, speak to us if you have concerns. Um, you may have had you know, some things happen in the past. That is not necessarily a barrier to employment, but you should you know, discuss that with us. Um, be able to be on your feet for eight hours a day and be able to complete 4.5 weeks of full-time training. Ultimately, what our janitorial track leads you to is a job at NYCHA as a caretaker. Um, how many of you have seen the caretakers working in your development? So we all have. So that is once you finish that training successfully, you pass the background check and you pass the drug test, then you will be in queue to be hired by NYCHA as a caretaker. Okay. So that brings us to the two trainings that um, you know we recruit for. Construction we're recruiting for right now, so I urge you to either give us a call or visit us at Opportunity NYCHA and register yourself for um, the upcoming TAVE exam. Or you can fill out a referral form in the back for that. And yeah. We'll give you a call. Absolutely. And one final thing about construction, since you know I've explained to you that the janitorial jobs lead to a job with NYCHA, we work with you in Section 3, Sheila and our other colleagues, um, to connect you to NYCHA vendors and NYCHA partners for employment once you finish that eight-week construction training. Okay? And I'll be here if anyone has any questions. Okay, great. So um, I'm just going to try and um, skip through the remaining slides so that we can get to our next presenter. Um, and if there's any questions, I'm happy to take them as time allows or individually at the back of the room. So I mentioned business development services in the beginning. Um, and we do have partners which will give you access to everything that's mentioned here. So that could be access to space, access to capital. Um, access to coaching, legal and marketing assistance. We actually, um, if you could go to the next slide, Gemma, we're actually recruiting for the Food Business Pathways program. This is um, an outstanding, unique program done in partnership with um, NYCHA and several partners whose logos you see down here at the bottom of your screen. We're actually about to graduate our second cohort and we are recruiting now for our third cohort. So this is a program for NYCHA residents or NYCHA Section 8 voucher holders who are interested in owning a food business. So this is not a culinary arts program, this is a business development program where individuals who already know how to cook may as I mentioned earlier, have been doing this informally or just want to get started, um, can apply. And there is an application process. If you're selected throughout, through that application process, then you get access to a tremendous amount of service all for free. You're going to have intense uh, preparation on how to run your own food business. You're going to learn. Um, you're going to get legal advice you will have the opportunity to get free incubator access. So five graduates per cohort will have the opportunity to obtain free kitchen incubator access. All right, so legally you are not supposed to uh, prepare food and sell food in your own uh, personal home, right? Uh, because of food safety requirements. So having access to a space that you can use for free for a certain amount of time to really get your business up and running is uh, very unique. 
Um, and many NYCHA residents are very interested in this. I'll tell you that we have residents who have graduated this program that have been featured in the media, featured in Crane's New York articles. We have a resident that is um, in the works with Whole Foods to begin selling their products at Whole Foods. We have a lot of success story that is coming out of this program. And this just um, goes through some of the eligibility, eligibility, sorry, which I already mentioned. Um, okay, so wrapping up, financial counseling. That's something that a lot of us don't want to think about, but we really do need to think about. And so it is a service that Reese does connect individuals to, both workshop uh, 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 courses and also one-on-one -on -one financial counseling. If that is something that you're interested in, again, we can make a referral for you to, uh, to do that um, today. Um, in addition, we also connect residents to uh, SNAP, formerly known as food stamps. Why do we do this? Well, there's a misconception that NYCHA residents are benefiting from a system, and that is really not the case. There are many residents that are eligible for food stamps that don't utilize this benefit. Um, but it's certainly within your right um, to utilize this benefit if you qualify for it. And it is a way that you really do increase your income and your assets, right? You're bringing an additional whatever am dollar amount into your household income per month. Um, and so this is something that we do refer residents to. Um, the benefit of getting a referral from our office is that we actually work with partners that have agreements with HRA, so we're not sending you to an HRA facility, which um, for many is a bit of a turnoff, uh, could be a longer wait. Um, instead, we're, we're uh, sending you to nonprofit providers that have agreements with HRA to do this type of screening. Um, at times, can mediate on your behalf if you have an issue with your current um, benefits. Um, and it's really much more of an in and out kind of service and, um, um, you know, in a more private setting. So that's the end of the presentation. I'm going to give it over to my colleague Dawn. Um, again, we do have a website, opportunitynycha.org. Um, the website has a lot of the information that I gave. Um, traditionally, individuals had to come to our office in Brooklyn to register their interest in Section 3. As of a couple of weeks ago, that is not the case. We still encourage people to come to us because we can really uh, have more of a conversation with them and give them access to a lot of other opportunities. Um, but if they are solely interested in Section 3 employment or unable to travel, they can register their interest online. Registering your interest online means that you're in our database so that you can be reached out to for when there is work that is going to happen, right? So a lot of times these are very long projections out, um, but you register your interest, you're in the database, and then we, we do ask that when we give you a call, you answer it. And if you're afraid to answer it because you don't recognize that phone number, listen to your message and give us a call back. Because unfortunately, we do have many residents that register their interests, and then when we reach out to them, we don't get a response. We also have many residents that register their interests, and when we reach out to them, they need one week to prepare their resume. Prepare your resume now. Get the skills now so that when the opportunities arise, you are well prepared and you really get to the front of the line because you're a very competitive candidate. Okay? Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Dawn Sanders, a proud resident of East Harlem, but I'm also head of Sandy Community Outreach and I help the uh, 35 developments that were affected by uh, Hurricane Sandy in a way that's rep uh, recognized by FEMA, right? Because I know Holmes Towers um, had some, some difficulties and there's a multiple developments around the city um, and people that suffer. But um, what we've been doing over the last two years is um, fighting with FEMA to make sure that we can get as much funding as possible 
to make sure that we have generators so that we won't have power loss, we'll have our elevators in the event of a storm, we won't have flooding that affects our heat and hot water. Um, these are all of the goals that we have. Um, so what I do want to do is, is uh, first thank uh, the council member's office and thank the residents and TA presidents because it's really a lot of the elected speaking to us and speaking to FEMA and to the mayor that has, has caused this. And it's also residents coming out to meetings and making sure their voices are heard that's leading the way that we're doing these designs and doing this rebuilding. So um, again, community outreach, we've been here um, I believe one time, but I'm going to be leaving letters in the back so that if you have questions about what's going on, what will we do if there's another storm, then we'll be available to help you to answer questions. Um, as was stated, the goal um, is 30% of new hires are supposed to be residents, and 15% of the funding is supposed to go to residents. So 15%, and this is um, reaching towards a $3 billion program. So. Like Shauna was saying, um, now is the time to get your resume dusted off. Um, we've uh, met residents who have a moving business or a demolition business, so that 15%, that applies to you. So if you know people who are like, oh, I should, maybe I should dust off my business, um, you should definitely bring those ideas forward, um, um, communicate them to the resources, <coughs> and communicate them to us, and our information will be in the back. Um, so our team is actually community outreach and we are about 60% residents and as I so said the goal is 30%. 30% is good but 60% is better and I think that if we work together and we really start now we can, we can increase that goal. Uh, the council member was telling you about um, construction jobs but you should know that there are also administrative jobs and they're hiring now for some of those. And you should also know that you're a short ride away from a lot of the developments that were affected by Sandy. And you are getting first preference, not just for work going on in Isaacs, but work going on in our 35 developments. So that would be East River, Metro North, Smith Houses, Reese, Wall, Baruch, uh, Two Bridges, LaGuardia. Um, you're also welcome to come out to Coney Island and Far Rockaway, but a lot of these developments some of them hiring right now are just a short train right away. So I would really strongly encourage you to, to dust off your resumes, um, go to the partners, have them put your resumes together, and get them in right away. Um, a gentleman was just hired two weeks ago at LES 5, and he had admin um, um, experience, and he just went in and he was in the right place at the right time. So our construction here starts um, next year, starts in 2016. Right now, we're still finalizing the design here for a new generators that will power you throughout a storm, um, new mechanical and electrical as needed. Um, and so, so we're still working on the design. We're gonna come back to the residents and ask them um, um, how we should design. We have done some tours with Ms. Bergen to make sure that we don't block pathways, that we don't um, take away parking, that we don't interfere with gardens. Those are the kinds of things that are going to be in in important to us. Um, but the bids, the companies that are going to be interested, those bids are going to go out um, probably the end of this summer. So the construction starts next year, but like I said, there's hiring going on all the time and we want your resumes right now. Um, we actually need a few more uh, representatives for the uh, for Upper Manhattan on our team. So I would um, I've hired two people out of the audiences of these types of meetings. Um, I'm shameless when it comes to that. Uh, so I just want to put that out there. And we also have an ACE mentorship for high school students. Um, they can learn about what's going on with architecture, construction, engineering. Um, the um, uh, residents and also minorities, women are very underrepresented in construction management, architecture, engineering, and there is a lot of interest in getting people into those fields. So um, we, we want to hear from you if your high school students are, are interested. So again, um, the best thing to do is to um, get resumes into Reese. Um, people also give us resumes and we partner with Reese to make sure that we both have the information that's necessary. There will be construction jobs, but um, immediately we've heard of uh, demolition jobs. People are uh, helping to renovate first floor apartments down on the Lower East Side and in Far Rockaway. 
um, their administration jobs. Um, I know that they were looking for plumbers recently. So whether you are already in the construction trades or if you're also an admin, you don't need to be on your feet eight hours a day for the admin jobs. Um, so, so there's no restrictions really on, on those uh, opportunities. Uh, so that actually is everything. I do have, um, luckily, our lead engineer, Bassam Dow, who has spent a lot of time on this, on this campus as well as many others. So if you have more in-depth questions about the design and Sandy we're building here, um, he will be here and I will be here as well to answer more questions. So thanks again for your time. We hope that we can hear from all of you soon.